Hey guys, welcome to uh, the latest episode of Gunplay TV 121. 121. We're old. And today we have Scott, the boss of HLJ. Hi everybody. Who has uh, done the latest from Bandai, the VF1. Yes, they just released their 70 second scale transformable <laughs> uh, plastic model kit of the Macross VF1. Amazing piece of engineering they've got here. Uh, you're going to talk us through the, the build a little bit, I think. A little bit. But um, <laughs> firstly, I'd like to say, like a lot of guys know that I, what made me fall in love with Japan initially was Robotech. Which ah, yes, Robotech. Yeah. That name. Now, yeah. in, I think in Japan it was Macross, yeah. but in, we had no idea in South Africa. And then also in South Africa, we never had the toys. Oh, ah, no yeah, but Scott, well, Scott, you tell us. Well, yeah, I was um, okay. I'm I'm an old dude. I'm I'm 48 years old. Um, <laughs> and in 1983, yeah. in the in the fall of 1983, I was uh, studying or getting ready to study at a Japanese mm -hmm. uh, university in Kobe, and uh, that's when the original Macross was actually on the air. Mm -hmm. I mean, the real yeah, the original real. show. Uh, and even in, in even thirty years ago, it's thirty years ago. I'm so old. <laughs> even <laughs> even thirty years ago, uh, you know, merchandising yeah. obviously had had taken hold, and we had um, the toys. Now we didn't have plastic models of Valkyries at that point. We'll get to no. the plastic model in a bit here, but we had the toys, and uh, this is a Takatoku Toys uh, VF1 Batroid Valkyrie uh, that I bought thirty years ago when oh. I was an exchange student uh, here in Japan. Still holds um, up. It still holds up. Some of the joints are getting a little on the stiff side, <laughs> kind of like humans do, I guess, when they get older. Uh -huh. uh, but at the time, not only did I think you know Macross was cool because yeah. you know it's like it was cool. I mean, transforming jets, transforming jets. Yeah. yeah. But then when I realized they had a toy that could actually do that, yeah, I, I can't describe the degree <laughs> to which I was blown away. And uh, so you know, I, my hands still have not forgotten how to do this. So we're going to take my yes, my my, my Fokker uh, Valkyrie here. He's a little he's a little worse for where he lost one of his head guns here, uh, and uh, some of the some of the parts are getting yeah, a little, little on the floppy side. But yeah, some of that UV discoloration happening. But yeah, it's a it's a true veteran. But yeah, uh, you can you can still do the still do the transformation here. Um, pop open these little hatches. I pretty much remember how everything goes. That's crazy. So the uh, the arms go back, the guns move forward. Yeah, we used to just draw these as kids. We uh -huh. we would have killed to have one of these in our hands. Yeah, well, I bought literally. I thought, I mean, without exaggerating, I thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. And I bought five or six of these things um, for all of my friends. Yeah. You know, when I came back from Japan, at times mm -hmm. like, here you go, have have the coolest thing ever ever made. Uh, I always love this, the landing gear. It has die-cast landing gear that are spring-loaded and pop out, and the springs still work, oh, fortunately. Man. You can see so his tail fin, tail fin locks getting a little floppy there, too, but there you go. Oh, There's the, uh, the fighter this version. This is so cool. <laughs> and it's, I mean, this was designed, did they have CAD in the 80s? I mean, how? Probably not 1982. I don't know if this is just uh, engineers, you know, uh, going crazy with multiple rounds of testing or yeah, what, but just... that you could do this to me was just the most amazing thing ever. Oh man. Um, and of course they, they also had the, you know, the parts, this is the Super Valkyrie yeah. version. Like I said, I bought four or five of these things. Um, I bought one of these blue ones here, I guess it's the VF1A uh, with the Super Valkyrie parts set on it. Uh, they also, uh, and some collectors might uh, go nuts for this, actually they'd go more nuts if the boxes <laughs> were in a little bit better shape, but I have we still have one in the box here, a blue one. Uh, this is the original Takatoku Toys, you know, boxing for this particular uh, Valkyrie. Now the um, Takatoku Toys, unfortunately, uh, went bankrupt like yeah. 20 years ago okay. or something. And Bandai bought the tooling for these Takatoku Toys Valkyries, uh -huh. and I believe they've released them at least once under the Bandai brand. But they were reissues, of course, of these old uh, Takatoku ones. But uh, here's another. Uh, Thing. We have the, this is the armored Valkyrie parts. You can put these on the actual toy uh, and bulk it up into this uh, super, you know, heavy armored version here. There's a lot of, a lot of parts included in that. Um, of course, uh, if you look at the new Bandai uh, VF1A kit, they, it looks like they've got a whole series uh -huh. ready to go uh -huh. here, right? They've yeah, got a, this one's v variable Valkyrie 01. Uh -huh. um, and then we've got, of course, the, uh, the strike parts set that they uh, released for it. Uh, so I would be completely flabbergasted if we didn't see, of course, the armor set for this at some point and the Super Valkyrie set. This is, you know, with the two huge engines on, on the back there. So it's, um, 
they have a lot of work that they can do yet, a lot of different kits they can release. A question, do you think, why do you think Bandai is pushing more the kind of snap-fit plastic kits rather than the completed toy kits? Maybe they thought Yamato's been there, done that. I, okay. I don't know. I can't really peer into the mm. minds of the marketing masters mm. there. Um, frankly, this thing is awfully fiddly when you do the when you do the transformations. <laughs> um, I just uh, I just completed this about twelve hours ago, to be honest, uh, and uh, I'm not uh, very good with the transformation yet. So we uh, we won't have you uh, endure all of that. Although we'll, we'll show some of the steps in the process. But yeah, this is not something that you can really play with, no, per se. No. In, I mean, the, these are toys and they stand up to play. The transformation is quick and easy. But on the downside, some of the proportions are a little clunky. Okay. You know, the hip joints don't mm. have any posability. Mm. They just move straight mm. forward and back, uh, things like that. But this, you know, Bandai has gone to great lengths to accurately depict mm. the kind of um, the shapes, the poses that you that you all see mm -hmm. from the series mm -hmm. that are so iconic, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, like just the fact that his legs can sort of splay like this into a more, yeah, you know, action the... pose uh, way, way beyond yeah. what these guys can do. But uh, because of all of this, of course, the transformation and all of the parts are mm -hmm. quite fiddly. So once you get it into that cool pose, you're going to want to probably leave it there yeah. for a while, take some good pictures of it there before you <laughs> attempt the next transformation. Well, that's what uh, Sid found out when he did uh, Macross Kid, that it's best to choose the pose you like yeah. and then fix it down. But the one thing I was surprised with was the weight. It's got mm -hmm. quite a weight, this kit. Yeah, it's it's all plastic, although there are four or five uh, metal pins mm -hmm. that go into some of the, the major uh, hinge areas. Uh, but with the exception of those four or five little aluminum pins, uh, it's all plastic. But yeah, it does have a yeah, surprising amount of heft for, uh, for this. But there are so many parts in here. When I opened the box, it looked like it was going to be a quicker build than yeah, it that's is. That's what I thought as well. It's, uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of tiny little bits. I was very impressed by uh, the engineering and the, the detail mm -hmm. in the 170 second scale. Mm -hmm. Personally, I believe these are 48 scale. And I would have okay. seen, I would prefer yeah. a kit in the larger scale. I can understand that. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess for when you start adding the, you know, the, the bulk up super parts and stuff, maybe the, the smaller scale is better. And who knows, maybe they will do. Maybe. Oh, and this is, a, I mean, this is a good price point as well. Like if you want a transforming Macross kit, mm -hmm. I think these, I mean, the ones you can buy, the toys we have, I think they're more than Ichiman sometimes. Right, right. And you're looking at less than that and uh, also the experience of just putting something together. Yeah, I don't know about uh, other guys who build Gundam kits, especially the more mm -hmm. advanced transforming style ones or the, the ones with the really intricate mm -hmm. inner frames. Um, but every time, even though I've done it dozens of times too, yeah. It's just like, like, wow, how do they engineer this stuff? I mean, what kind of degrees and experience did the guys at Bandai have to have in order to figure out, you know, like, I can't really show it very well on camera here, but the all of the hinges and slide mechanisms that are within the central part of this thing, uh -huh. you know, to allow the shoulder, you know, joints to come out and the, and the hip joints to work and the, and the head to be able to move from the bottom up to the top and yes. all of that is just... It's crazy, and uh, although some of the, the bigger structures are pretty much similar to the basic uh -huh. concepts that Takatoku came up yeah. with in order to make the transformation uh -huh. work, they've taken it so far beyond. Um, and it's, yeah, it's hats off to the guys at Bandai. I mean, certainly it would be nice if it was a lot more stable you know, and toy-like, mm -hmm. but that you can even do this and have it at all <laughs> is amazing. Uh, it's really amazing. So. Now, when we unboxed the kid last episode, we noticed the pins yeah and we were just warning people because i think in the manual it is in japanese mm -hmm. did you have any problems knowing which pin went where uh no actually because on the on the pins i believe there's there's like six of them that are of one length mm -hmm. and then i think there's one that's a bit shorter mm -hmm. there might be a longer one too i i, I don't recall exactly oh, but in the instruction sheet at each of the spots where you use a pin yeah uh, they have a one-to-one -one scale drawing of the exact length of pin that you need okay. to use at that step so you know, if you're careful, you're not going to okay. have any problems doing it. Um, the one thing I did do wrong, and yeah. I think we were talking about this the other day, yeah, you've yeah, done yeah. this as well. There's a couple of spots on the kit uh, where some parts mm -hmm. have little things sticking off of them that mm -hmm. actually can look like runner gates. Mm -hmm. And if you get a little bit too excited with your art knife when you're trimming your parts, yeah. you might actually take off an actual you know, mechanism mm -hmm. or structure. And then the couple of areas where that is the case, 
uh, Bandai has in the instructions, unfortunately in Japanese, do not cut this <laughs> off, you know, written in, uh, well, in the instructions. But I did, I did lop one off, but so far it hasn't uh, created a problem. We're running a, this facepalm competition where it's basically a Gundam with, <laughs> and one of, the, one of the guys actually said, you know, you're building a kid, you cut off a particularly important piece because you think it's a runner and you screwed your kid. Yeah. But Scott hasn't. It still functions. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was yeah. around one of the wrist parts or okay. something. Um, and I think it's supposed to help the arms snap up under the body when it's in fighter okay. mode. Uh, and I took off half of it. There's actually one on the left and one on okay. the right, and I took <laughs> off one of them. Uh, but so far, it, it hasn't it's, affected it's my okay. ability to pose it in the uh, things. But yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, but it is a, it is an actually a, a pretty complex build. And it's going to take a while, even for me, and I've built a lot of these kits. I do take my time, but mm. just each leg took me about an hour and a half to do. Uh, I'm surprised because when I pulled it out, I thought, oh, this will be quick because I'm building a big PG. But I can understand when, mm. when you start dealing with the very small pieces, it can take a lot of time. Now, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I'm going to jump behind the camera and mm -hmm. Scott is going to show us a bit of the transformation. Okay, yeah. The, um, that's all I've, I've gotten so far is, is the actual assembly. Uh, as you can see here, it's not very impressive looking because none of the panel line details, only a couple of the stickers are mm -hmm. on. I did the wing stripes and that's about it. Okay, cool. Um, if you want to see how good it looks when it's finished, we've already got a post oh, up yeah, on the blog. Oh yeah, there is um, and... two posts. Yeah. The first part, which is just uh, unboxing, and the second part is actually putting it together and transforming it with all the line detailing. So if you want more close-ups, have a look at that. But let's stop there and let's... Let, 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 Give it a shot. Let's just edit that out. I, no, nah, that's all right. I'll probably, okay. uh, I probably won't be able to transform this thing as elegantly as you just said. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Thanks, it a whirl God. here. <laughs> So there you have it, Batroid mode. Um, haven't finished the gun yet, so I can't put him in a real cool action pose. Um, but yeah, that was quite a bit of fiddliness. I've, uh, the first time I've ever done it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, probably took me about uh, 10 minutes to go from the Gurwalk mode to here and uh, get everything into a position that seems like it's supposed to be in. Uh, there's still some kind of kludginess around his shoulder here that I haven't gotten exactly right. But hey, for, for try one, it looks pretty robot-like, I would say. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely, like I said, this isn't the kind of uh, model that you're going to be able to play with, but models really aren't for playing with anyway. They're for making cool poses. So once you get it into the, the cool pose you like, it looks exactly like Kyle Morisan's original designs uh, from the anime. So they've definitely uh, put the weight on getting it exactly right on the appearance, and I think they've completely nailed it. So, so yeah, it's an amazing piece of engineering, and if you're a Macross fan, or a fan of Bandai Mech in general, this has got to be in your collection. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Sid. Sid's here. I'm here today. I forgot to mention that he'll be here. Sorry. I'm here. Actually, uh, I deferred to Scott. He's the, he's the yeah, Macross Scott loves guy. The and Macross. You, you're the Macross fan, so I figured I'll sit back. I'll let you guys handle that Macross kit. 
and uh, you'll be able to talk a lot more about it than I would because well I love the series somewhat in Canada I never actually got into the toys so. yeah, well Scott has well Scott experienced it firsthand in Japan in the 80s like, yeah you know to be there when it happened. I was in Africa <laughs> watching it on my TV yeah but yeah should we discuss groups yeah let's talk about groups let's talk about Hobbling TV yes and uh, we can mention the face bomb Gundam yes which Contest. is going very that well group, it's going really well remember you can enter as many times as you like you just take the picture that's there and, and please uh, like the ones you like or yeah. comment like add a caption yeah there are some it. funny ones yeah some yeah. really really good ones and uh, there's gonna be prizes awarded for the best 10 percent so. coupons from hlj so that's keep, the prize keep submitting you have until episode 125 when we announce that the is layer. correct yep also let's talk about the gun and kit bash group okay now uh, for those who don't know we're going to be doing a kit bash on the show and i asked people in that group to list two master kits they want to see mm -hmm. mashed together mm -hmm. and there's been a whole list of uh suggestions mm -hmm. and now here's some of the latest ones i want to read them okay. out so sparta 112 says any resil with a delta plus perhaps modify the head to look like a gundam type mm -hmm. or just smack a v-fin on the resil head that's kind of cheating just that's cheating we don't slap stuff best around kit bash ever to slap a different v-fin <laughs> on there, yeah? all right gn 0000 hyphen 01 gundam uh -huh. stand for monograts, how about a double O Gundam body, mm -hmm. head, arms, and the O riser core, co core component with the shoulder cannons and the legs of the H2 double bullet? This isn't a bad idea because somebody posted after that that you could use the uh, the, the big binders on the double mm -hmm. bullet for the uh, O riser binders, you know, for the riser binders, which uh, it would work. It would be probably take a little bit of tinkering with the frames to get everything on there, but that's what a kit bash is about, right? And then Flash X007, uh -huh. he thinks, I think a kit bash of the Masquerade Epion and the uh -huh. new version Ka would be awesome. Just to carry over the unique, unique design of the Epion to the new would be amazing. Uh -huh. And I also think it would be amazing because the new, it's really well proportioned, it's really tall, and those wings on the Epion are so big that I think that it would work together really well. But remember, uh, this is up to you, the community. So get on yes. there, post your suggestions, like the ones that you think are cool and you want to see, and then we'll pick one of the more popular ones yeah. and we'll do it on the show. So it's gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna do my best to show you how to approximate Gundam doing it. style. <laughs> Gundam style. Uh, right. I want to just mention the Gunpla TV group. Yeah. And we've actually branched out a little bit in our okay. conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. Philip actually mentioned it's Happy Independence Day, and we mm -hmm. just started a discussion about the movie Independence Day. Yeah, and you so, know there's sequels coming. Yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. a two part. Well, I guess yeah. they're doing the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Yeah, the two part movie. Yeah. <laughs> a virus programmed right. on a Mac That's from right. the 80s works with alien defeat, technology. Will defeat aliens. That's right. Mac and does guys everything. And, spears <laughs> and then get that really upsets me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to join that conversation, <laughs> go to the Gumpler TV group. Independence. And then the, another conversation was actually started about games, video yeah. games. Now Sid and I both, I game took part in that conversation. Yeah. And yeah, check it out. So yeah, lots going on on the blog, in the groups, but we got questions. Okay, let's from, answer some uh, questions. The first two are from YouTube. Okay. We still appear there. Yeah, every week. Every week. Uh, Kings of Comedy. Hey, Hobby Link, I have a question. Are you guys going to have the MG1100 Wing Gundam Proto Zero EW mm. for pre-order or is this model kit just a hoax? I looked on another website and they said it was coming out in October. Yes, that's uh, the big the big discussion right now. Because mm -hmm. normally you'll see something in the uh, hobby magazine, like mm -hmm. Hobby Japan, Dengeki Hobby, I think they always are the first to put up the new images. But the images that we saw for the uh, Gundam Wing Proto mm -hmm. were from a different magazine. So people are wondering why this magazine has it when we haven't seen it in the other magazines. What's, what's real, what's not real. I'm inclined to think that yes, this is going to come out. Mm -hmm. But until we get the official information for from Bandai, Bandai, we can't say for sure. You know, yeah. We can't put up for pre-order if it yeah. doesn't exist. And we have to confirm it exists before we start taking people's money for it. Yeah, Bandai would be pretty uh, upset with us if we just started putting up stuff and saying, yeah, Bandai is doing it. Yeah, Taking so a bunch of pre -orders. I heard there's going to be something, something mm. in the future and just throw it up there and <laughs> wait for the price. Like, it probably would not work. Next, Mr. Bebop Phantom. 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 Bebop. Bebop Cowboy Phantom. Bebop. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I love that anime. It's I have a question. Anime. I just ordered the MG Shinanja and I know I want to paint, hand paint the gold lines mm -hmm. on wrists and chest, but I don't have steady hands when it comes to painting. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips or tricks that I can do? Uh, well, the, the I say masking. tip or trip, the, the, the tip or trick would just be to practice. Just get some runner or some spare part you don't need and just practice hand painting a certain part of it. 
so you're confident in your brushing skills and then you can go on to uh, hand painting those those small trims on the shenanjou but what other people have done mm -hmm. is actually take like the gold gundam marker and then just oh. use that on there and if they, make, if they make a mistake it's easy to take yeah, off yeah. so uh, you can do that too it's kind of it's kind of hand painting but you're using a marker to do it and also because uh, the back the it's on black plastic right if you do make a mistake with your painting mm -hmm. you can go back after with like a, a, a black ink mm -hmm. pen and kind of cover over it where you made a mistake there's there's different ways to to get around these things if you have, don't have the confidence in your hand painting skills if you have a shaky hand yeah is that everybody now nobody actually hand writes these days yeah everybody types so do it on a computer it. print it 3d, 3D printer. print it <laughs> next is from multi hearts dear mm -hmm. sid and ryan mm -hmm. which gundam would you pilot and why i would pilot the kid i'm building the gpo one because it transforms and it's huge don't forget that part. and it's huge it's huge it's big. and you said oh geez i would say either the shenanju just because it's awesome and all the thrusters on that thing maybe oh man maybe the red frame mm. as well i think it looks lean and fast and it carries a sword which you know i like but i have a sword in space yeah because yeah, <laughs> hey that guy that's <laughs> another galaxy over come over here yeah. um actually this is a super good question multi hot i'm going to post it in the gunpla tv group okay and on youtube and what generate some discussion what would you like to pilot yes which, what would you like to pilot and why pilot and why is it because it has leather interior <laughs> that's right has blu-ray you that's tell right. us what's next okay this one is from the blog okay hey guys well done on another amazing episode however i have a very important question for you guys yeah okay. what was your very first plastic model or gundam model kit yeah another very good question um the way you ran Actually, I remember my first model kit, and it was a, a, an old aircraft, mm -hmm. like a propeller, a prop, when I was about seven or eight, yeah. with glue. And yeah. I remember just messing it up, yeah. but it was awesome. My, what about your first Gundam? I was here in the show, no? Um, actually, no. My first Gundam was when I was in Japan. It's actually, it's like the the backpack. It's like those big wings. Like, um, uh, what's it called? It's like big feathers. You guys wing tell us. Gundam. Wing Gundam? Wing yeah, the Wing Gundam, but uh, yeah. Uh, the first model kit I ever built was a helicopter. I think it was the Apache. Uh -huh. Or maybe the Cobra. Uh -huh. And I was maybe 12. And I thought, oh, this thing looks so cool. I want to build it. And my father's warning me, like, it takes cement. You got to paint it. There's pickles. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know what? I put that glue where I'm supposed to glue and I put those pieces together. And I'm like, yeah, this is going awesome. And then I was told, well, you have to wait for the glue to dry before you can move on to the next piece or the next step. And I was like, no, I don't want to stop. You know, and so I just kept going and going pretty much in like four hours. I glued the whole thing together and it kind of just <laughs> fell apart in my hands. Yeah. And I said, model kits suck. I'm going to play with my Star Wars action figures now. If there, I was building, like, Lego was my thing. Yeah. I think, like, but... Yeah, I did Lego a lot, yeah. too. Lego was awesome. Mm -hmm. no. I, uh, what, my first gun, I'm going to answer that question. Oh, yeah, sorry. So. Master grade Shin Musha. Okay. No, yeah, the Master Grade Shin Musha. When did you build that? Built that within two months of starting here, four and a half years ago. Okay. And so I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. I don't have to glue anything. Yeah, no gun. <laughs> I was here on holiday when I built that Wing Gundam. Yeah. And I just went to Yorubashi and I saw this Gundam and I was like, I'm in heaven. Yeah. And it was really, I mean, I didn't realize it was inexpensive, but in South Africa, any kind of ex robots were just yeah. crazy, ridiculous. And Australia, as some Australians yeah. have pointed out, they Pricing is rip you off. Pretty high. Yeah. But there was something yeah. I felt I had to say, yeah. but I have forgotten it. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Robert. You know Robert. Or um, Robert 184. 184. He's he a has done a couple of awesome posts mm -hmm. of a complete build of the Macross VF1S. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out if yeah. you want to see a comprehensive. Yeah, he's, comprehensive. A, he's a member of the Hobby TV. He is, he is so there, so find there. him. Yeah. Hunt them down. Spam with those friend requests. Yeah. Looking yeah. at you. <laughs> those people have more friends than me. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I think there must be some admin function. Just add everyone. <laughs> There's a button. Send oh, and next week. Next week, Sid and I will be talking PG hands. Yes. We're working on those. My kit is almost hands. done. So you'll be, almost, you'll be seeing a completed kit. And yep. I'll be showing the LEDs and the hands. I and hope to actually we get done with PGs. By the time the Masquerade Gear Doga arrives, and then the following week the RGs. So 
And At the end of this month's gonna be crazy. I know what I'm gonna be building next once I finish the Gundam. Oh, but you're I'm gonna decided. be Well, I'm actually gonna do a Mac Care because I've always been talking Mac Care and yeah. I haven't done it. Yeah. So I'm gonna find one so and now do it. Talk smack with the Mac. Well, now Ooh. I can join the Mac Care group because I'm actually gonna build a kid. Yeah, I've they're, built they're, a Mac. They're very classy. Yeah, yeah, he did a snowman. Yeah, I did the snowman. Yeah. A lot of fun. So I look forward to that. But um, I'm still got quite a bit to do. I want to actually do a bit of weathering, not crazy weathering on the GPO one. Well, appreciating. Appreciating. Uh, but we'll discuss that further. Okay. Well then we'll we'll bring all that stuff out in the future episodes. Look forward to those ones. We'll see you later. See you guys.